Stokers, what up? So fired up that you're here for this episode with Mark Norman. It is one of my favorites already, and I'm very psyched to uh, have you on. First off, we are on tour. We are coming to Arlington, Virginia this weekend. We're going to be in San Diego next weekend. We're going to Appleton, Wisconsin the weekend after that. We're going to Ohio. We're going to Oklahoma. I'm talking Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And we have some local dates coming up. Get your tickets at chatandjt.com. You don't want to miss our show. We're also brought to you by the Legends Athletic Greens. I take AG1 every day because, dude, it gives you all your nutrition in one drink. You get tons of energy, immunity boost, and my skin feels better. You get all the biotics, the prebiotics, the probiotics, the every biotic you can think of. It's legit. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. Let's uh, sizzle the steak and flick my bean. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nations? This is Chad. Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chat JD podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. Boom clap, Stokers. And we're here with Mark Norman. Dude, thank you for joining. Hey, hey. I have no idea what you guys just said, and I don't speak <laughs> gay code. <laughs> what makes you think it's gay? I heard a clap, if which you, I've had. If you don't understand it, you think it's gay? No, I'm just <laughs> no, kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm just joking around. That was that was some cool <laughs> slang you <laughs> Yeah, Homeboys like, are cooking with. We like to confuse you up top. Hey. I thought you'd get Flick the Bean, though. That I got. Flick yeah. the Bean, the man in the canoe. Yeah. You know, dressing the taco, <laughs> sharpening the hatchet wound. I get those. Oh, dude, I haven't heard that one. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Filling up the love hole, putting a finger in the, in the, the puss glove, <laughs> skin <laughs> flaps, beef curtains. We can go all night. Is that your dirty talk? Oh yeah, honey pot. <laughs> uh, what else is there? Meat pocket. Hurt locker. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's this good. Squirt locker. <laughs> Squirt locker. That's that was what I called my fridge. <laughs> dude, that was the name of my house in college. <laughs> There used to be a drink called Squirt. Remember that? Yeah, oh, that's good. That was that like Mountain going? Dew competition. Yeah, yeah, it was kind I of a that citrusy. One. I never tried it. It was good. It's good for pulling vodka with. That's did, right. Yeah, yeah. And I heard but, it's mostly urine. <laughs> That's what everybody has to tell you about squirting. You know, it's all you. I'm like, don't. You know, let me have this dream. You cut. Yeah, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I'm just in all that matters is that you made it happen. Mm-hmm. Have you been squirted on? Oh yeah, I got squirted in the face once. Nice. She was a real super soaker. Twenty. Wow. Uh, that was her age. But uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of squirting. She was hydrated. Oh yeah. The the. Juice is gonna move you. Did you celebrate? Sure. With I had, a fist pump. Luckily, I had my goggles on. But uh, yeah, we. I was just very in my head. I was like, "This is awesome," because I was eating her out, and she squirted. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever go for the squirt? Like, cause you, I, I picked up what the finger movement is oh, from yeah. watching pornography. The up. But but oftentimes when I go for it, uh, people will be like, "No, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that." Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not interested. Same here, and I I guess you can get too rough, you know? Cause yeah. On the porno, they're like. Ah, yeah, they're really hammering. They're going hard in there. Yeah, but I think those ladies have they've seen it all. They've they've pounded everything. Yeah, they're they, like industrialized. Exactly. They're exactly. Tough. A little weathered. <laughs> so they can take a real you know, finger finger jamming. Oh yeah. All right, what's up ladies? Are you guys enjoying the pod so far? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call in and tell us how to do it cuz we'd like to get you off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I I um I struggle with that sometimes too, where I, I just don't want to put too much pressure on my partner that they have to also get off because I know that's kind of like the enemy of uh, like the psychology they need to be in to get there. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I so, think toys, get the toys in there. I'm mm. I'm a big fan of those guys. Yeah, bringing all the help you can get. Yeah, because if I can't get her off, and I because I'll get off in two seconds, I feel horrible. I feel mm. guilty. Right. Yeah, I, I try to be like, it'd be nice if you did, but it's no biggie if you don't. Right, right. I've been yeah. meaning to get a butt plug for like six months now. I just right. haven't made the trip. For you or for her? Both. For me. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, all right. Well, they sell the big ones on Amazon. <laughs> Dude, that's I'll where I it. need to go because I've been looking. <laughs> yeah, I assume you're a gaper. <laughs> These are too small to be huge. I mean, you, you, you can tell. I'm I can tell by the way you're sitting. Yeah, right. Just the seat just goes right yeah. in. <laughs> gaper is a terrible word. Oh, yeah. Is there another word we could come up with for it? Statutory gape. Uh, <laughs> gape apologist. Yeah, you're right. Maybe... Um, Exfoliator. Oh, that's good. Just exfoliator. Exfoliator. Hey, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> We're back. Have you ever gaped? Have I ever gaped? No, no. I'm not a big <laughs> gaper. Um, I, I I like the butt stuff. Yeah. But I just hang out on the on the the rim. The perimeter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, safer. I think once you go in, alarms start going off. You're like yeah. not meant to be in there. For and, me, for me, the way I'm physiologically designed. Oh, okay. Well, porno changed everything, you know, because it, it makes every guy think every woman does anal, every woman likes choking, every woman doesn't want to kiss. Mm-hmm. Well, and all the guys now are getting their butts licked in porn. That's Whoa. become That wasn't popular when I was coming up, and now it's kind of the standard across the board. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's good for us, too, because we got to see those butts from the back. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, yeah, at least if I'm going to look at a guy's ass, let's make it clean shaven. Mm. Right. Yeah. I don't know how hairy my asshole is. Oh, it's wild. Is it? I can tell by your face. <laughs> your face is I think I'd actually surprise you. I think okay. I'd actually surprise you. Yeah. Oh, man, my my looks, hair's well situated. My ass looks like I'm sitting Not on Shia LaBeouf's head. <laughs> it's just, there's hair and curls and like a gummy bear in there and a, a paper rat clip. tail. A rat tail. It's got yeah. some braids and a couple I heard beads. Shia got hair transplanted onto his ass to mm. boost his masculinity. That's a real rumor. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Yeah. So you're from uh, New Orleans. I know a lot about you because I'm a huge fan of Tuesdays with Stories. Hey, it's all pipes. Yeah. And I saw you out here at Meltdown like 10 years ago, and you were instantly wow. like my favorite comedian. Ah, yeah. jeez. Yeah, I'm you honored. crushed. Thank you, man. Um, that was a hot show. But uh, did you pick up, what's the lingo of New Orleans? Because we do our SoCal lingo, so do you have any yeah. hot slogans you could drop? Well, New Orleans is weird because it's, it's very, it's, it's like a Cajun influence with a lot of black slang. Mm-hmm. So there's like a lot of like... How you, how you doing, bra? Everything's mm. bra, you know. <laughs> and then uh, how you, how you mom and them? And then everything it's it's not the it's duh. Mm-hmm. So duh. I'm going down by the bayou, mm-hmm. downtown, you know. Um, so it's this weird kind of boomhauer water boy, but then obviously it's still a city, so we we kind of clean it up, but it's still there. In, a do, bit. do you have any vestiges of that in your? Because you don't, I don't, I wouldn't have guessed you're from there from listening to you speak, but I really don't know what the region sounds like. It's got a little bit of southern twang, but it's not like a Texas or anything like, uh, how y'all doing, partner? You know, it's none of that, but mm. it's a little bit of twang with a little bit of ebonic y hood in there. But I don't have it because I, I grew up like right in the inner city and my right. parents are big liberal queefs and uh, <laughs> so no <laughs> accent. And I wouldn't work with a southern accent, yeah, it doesn't work on me. My brother lives there. Oh, yeah? And I think at Lakeview is that yeah. place. Uh, yeah, I always forget because my sister's in Oak Park in Chicago, and I always think he's in Oak Park, too. Right. Lakeview, though. Yeah. Lakeview, that's a good area. That's like the the clean, white, safer area. Yeah. And we, all my friends bougie. live there. Yeah. There you go. Were you there during uh, Katrina? I was actually in Baton Rouge an hour away going to college, um, so I was safe, but the whole city was fucked and everybody's parents had to stay with them in the college dorm because they didn't like you know people didn't have a second home mm-hmm. so they have to you have to make it work so your parents moved in with you yeah for like you know a week and i lived in a house with five guys beer pong hot tub we had a bar in the kitchen so it was awkward it was like a sitcom did your dad play beer pong with you no 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 he just read the paper in his underwear and black socks <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty brutal we all had to kind of like behave for a week but the other kids had their parents yeah too right yeah oh that's pretty fascinating it was weird definitely weird it was a world's colliding Mm -hmm. did you still party at all oh yeah i'm hung over now (laughs) (laughs) you get free drinks at a comedy club so it's just uh bring it on where are you performing at levity live levity live and oxnard not bragging (laughs) <laughs> Sold out six shows. Uh, it's a real suburbia over there. Dude, it's tough to sell tickets out there. Yeah. Yeah, they're selling out there, that's really impressive. Well, I got the Mexican vote, so mm. I think I'm in. How'd you swing that? I just shit on them a lot. <laughs> and they like it. Mexicans Mexicans are great uh, audience. They're great comedy fans. Um, I feel like most minorities are 
way better than the honkies. Whiteies mm-hmm. are the worst. Whiteies are the worst. White women number one, and then the the white guys who who can't Date get the laid are the worst. Yeah. yeah, and then so on. And then like, is it because they're so sensitive to those other groups being picked on? Yes. If those other groups don't care. Exactly. And I think they think in their weird warp mind they have to be like this the hero they have to save so they're like i'll be doing a bit about something and they'll be like no no and i'm like lady none of this happened like it's nobody appointed you yeah the general of this stuff and then and then when you start calling them out and the crowd turns on them she's mm-hmm. confused she's like wait what i thought i was the hero mm-hmm. and then she has to double down on cuntville mm. so now she she won't be like don't no one ever double down on cuntville well no There's one ever goes oh you. you're right i'm sorry I fucked up. I shouldn't have yelled out. Then they have to double down and be meaner. Right. And then it's just the whole crowd turns on them. I, I think the worst heckler is someone who loves you. Mm. And then they just won't stop yelling. So true. And then you have to kick them out, but they don't understand because they're, yes. like, they're like, but I love you. And you're like, yeah, but you suck. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is the hardest because you're like, I, I appreciate you as a fan, but you're still an idiot. <laughs> You're still yeah. ruining the show for other yeah. people. You still have to yeah, learn yeah, a lesson. Yeah. 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 And then there's the, con- the crowd who has to let you know they know everything about you. You yeah. know, they'll be like, oh, Nola, uh, you know, how's your Beamer? Or whatever. They have they have all these inside mm-hmm. tips on those you. Those were all questions like, I was going to ask you. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, you can ask. We're on a podcast, but on a show. I'm like, first of all, it's where you know more about me than my father. But secondly, <laughs> this isn't a speed date, you know, or a dialogue. <laughs> With with the um, your crowd work stuff, how did were you always good at handling those people who would jump in and get offended, or did you like kind of build that up as you've progressed? I totally built it up because these clips. It's all about the clips. You got to have a clip and content and all that shit. Yeah, that's so. kind of what I was getting to. How do you feel about that shift in what like the stand up paradigm is? Well, I get it. I don't knock any comic for doing it. I do it, but because it does work, it does sell tickets. I know a guy who put out a special, and he's hilarious. This guy Fahim Anwar. Yeah, great guy. Hilarious guy, and he was like, my special didn't really move the needle, but I put these clips out, and people are seeing those, so mm-hmm. the game has changed. Dude, I was I was actually with my girlfriend just watching Fahim clips. Like, he's he's hilarious. Great comedy mind. He, yeah. he, mm-hmm. He's got good angles. Yeah. yeah. Jake Jake was kind of explaining to you. He cuts our clips for us, and he was saying that the, the crowd work clips work because it makes the audience at home who's, like, watching on their phone feel like they're there in the present ah, moment. Ah. Yes. While it's going on, but when but when I started, I was so like invested in the bits. That's why I was such a big fan of yours. You had such good bits. Oh, and man. then, Jeez. but it's crazy now because it just does, doesn't seem like there's much of a premium on that. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Well, I think. Hold on. <laughs> no, please don't fart. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get the I, mic down there. I fucking, <laughs> I fucking hate farts. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't know no, that. no, but I don't want to stop you from being you. So that was far the last away. one. Last but one. But I just wanted Mark, to disclose my perspective. Mark, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, give me yeah. your butt plug so I can <laughs> plug it up. You I mean, fart I, I, and I, burp on so many podcasts. How do you always have them ready? I just have to fart and burp a lot. It's not. A, I don't even prepare. It just I, happens. I, I can't even fart because I gape. <laughs> yeah, you just. Yeah, yeah, it comes out <laughs> so quiet. When, so when I hear it, I get jealous. I'm like, oh, the good old days. <clears throat> uh, what was the question? Sorry, I I forget, but I got a new cue. When did you first start farting like, oh, on pods? I don't know. You just uh, well, I'm on pods so often that uh, a fart will have to come, and I just go, ah, I got to be myself. You feel, and you've, you've farted on like Rogan before. There's like oh, 10, yeah. million, 10 million people have heard you fart before. Yeah, and I think to Ari's point, it's fun farting on a microphone, and then two days later, a scientist will be speaking into it. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, some astrophysicist is like, hmm, smells like Chipotle. <laughs> But yeah, the clips, you got to do it. But I, I agree with you. I think uh, everybody has this horrific crowd work. There's such bad crowd work clips out there like where the audience is funnier than the comic. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. pitching in all the funny parts. Yeah, it's horrible. But then this comic had 8 million views. But whatever, I think the cream rises because I think a bit is really what connects with people. A yeah. good idea, a good angle, a good joke. No one, no one in 20 years is going, oh, remember that crowd work? joke we heard right now you go remember that chris rock bit or whatever that yeah movie bit? we were talking about the other day it's like uh you can do even when it comes to like videos and stuff you can do stuff that, like, that's like topical that will get tons of views oh yeah in the moment but the stuff that really lasts that 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 i feel like that creates fans that stick with you definitely. forever definitely you know where it's just like really solid comedy yeah but the topical is good to get a quick burst of exposure like yeah. you have a dylan mm-hmm. mulvaney joke Put it out there right now. This is when it's all hot and you're in the algo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think you're right. I think a good 
bit about the Holocaust will last a lot <laughs> exactly. longer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that nine eleven? Which one's the Holocaust? I think you can never That's forget both of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's similar. It's like always remember or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Give that a Google. Will you there, Jakey? <laughs> now it's going to kill me. The Holocaust, uh, it's always with you or keep it in your pocket. I can't remember. Uh, that's going to be a weird Google search. All right, sorry, boys. People will forget it at some point. That's true. That's true. Damn. Yeah, I wonder if even the next generation, like, I'm doing a joke right now about Forrest Gump, and I'm wondering, I'm like, is that too old a reference I know. for, like, sub-30 people? Yeah. Like, I think they'll know what it is vaguely, but I don't think they'll remember, like, the beats of the movie. So true, yeah. I, I think, and plus we're progressing so fast with, like, content, content all the time that we're pushing out the past more. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, you know, I, like I know, I grew up in the '80s, but I know everything about the '60s. And right, 70s. the churn on it is quicker now. Quicker churn. The Spotify, there's YouTube. There's so much more to take in. Where before it was TV and books and movies. That was it. And the time sensitivity of it. It's got to be shorter, quicker. Got to be short. You're right. Yeah. I can't remember my whole childhood. Mm. I think it's because of the phone. Because I'm always on the phone. Maybe. I like that my childhood, high school. I'm also. I don't really see my high school friends or call. I see my college friends here and there, but I just don't. I don't know what happened. I, I'm the same as you, and I will yeah. sit down sometimes and make a mental. I will. I will make myself try to remember stuff. Yeah, because I don't want to lose it. Yeah, I. I'll, I'll see friends up. Like the, they'll like reference people, and I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah, who you're talking. People will reach out. I'm like, I don't remember you at all. That's kind of nice though. Yeah, eternal sunshine of the spotless it mind, nice. right? You're just moving forward. I guess, but is think, remembering a good thing? Like, does I think it, help it is. Us? I have well, a good memory. I, I remember most things. But then you can remember something stupid you did 15 years true, ago. True, that too. It still stings. But what's the point of experiences if you can't remember them? I mean, they're great in the moment, but then they're just fleeting and gone. Right. I don't know. It's nice to... I'll sit there in bed when I can't sleep and think about all the girls I fucked. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. You had the best war stories for that. That was a oh, big... Because I was times. like in my 20s and I was trying to get laid all the time and I'd listen to Tuesdays with Stories and you'd go to like Bonnaroo or something and just have like oh, the greatest yeah. escapades. So and fun. it always seemed so fun. And you, you were so... You'd always tell the truth about the situation, but you always kept it very sweet too, which I think is a... Like it's hard to recall a sexual encounter on a yeah. podcast uh-huh. and not let it go like not detailed enough or too douche but you walk that line so well well I, I, I appreciate every lady who let me uh, defile her and uh, <laughs> I, I never want to make them feel bad and I'm just happy to be there I'm very grateful I, I got not laid for so long that when right. I got laid I was like thank you I, you know, I'm sending flowers and shit <laughs> Yeah, I think my favorite. It's so weird. I remember it so well, but I remember your Scottsdale one, and you were just so effusive oh, about Scottsdale that and was like a wild weekend and like the culture and lifestyle of the women who live there. You're like, they drink water all day by the pool. Yeah, <laughs> and it was yes. like, and I was like, that does sound really well, nice. It's so crazy hot there. It's like living on Mars. And you yeah. gotta just be in a pool or be inside. That's it. And you, uh, you got married recently, right? Yeah, baby. Did you? Uh, yeah, so you got the ring. That's cool. You oh, got married yeah. in New Orleans. Do you have a parade? We did. We had a second line. Oh, wow. Which was originally, I think, for funerals, mm-hmm. but it's been adapted to celebrations. Guy out there, oh, big nice. black guy with an umbrella, and there's a full <laughs> marching band, and That's awesome. you get a, a white white uh, <laughs> handkerchief and. You dance down, and everybody comes out on the balcony and yells at you. It's fun. Oh, that's amazing. It's a did, good time. How did you uh, propose? Uh, well, I was pretty much forced. No, I. Uh, <laughs> she was kept pushing it, kept pushing it, and then I went on a trip. We went to Martha's Vineyard with her family, and I got the ring. And uh, the, by the way, getting the ring and all that is a is a nightmare. Stressful. Right? No one tells you how hard that is. So whatever. So she just kind of really won't let up about it we go to martha's vineyard i got the ring in my pocket of my bathing suit and i'm like all right today's the day i'm gonna propose by the way very scary proposing yeah no one tells you that either i'm sure because you just want to do it right yeah it's just a nerve-wracking moment and you're like this is a huge deal do i get down on one knee do i open the thing should i have a thing prepared to say or should i just wing it so uh i was at this house where all with with her family we're all staying there i got the ring in my pocket and her brother comes in, and I'm like, oh, hey. And I'm like putting it in my pocket. He goes, what are you guys doing today? And I was like, ah, I'm going to think to myself, I'm going to propose, so I need alone time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, we're going to go to the lighthouse and get uh, mopeds. And he was like, let's do it. And I was like, ah. So now he's following me with his girlfriend, and I got my lady. And eventually I take him to the side, and I just show him the ring. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. And he's like, okay, okay. <laughs> so me and her walk on the beach. <laughs> Me and her walk on the beach, and I go, hey, I got to pee. Can you keep a lookout? So she turns around and looks the other way, 
I get down, uh, start peeing, get the ring out, finish <laughs> peeing, zip up, get down on the knee. And I go, hey, check this out. And she turned around, and I had the ring open. Yeah. Immediately starts crying, do the whole thing. We hug. And then there was a couple on the beach, like an old couple. And they turn around, and they start applauding. So that was a nice oh, moment. Oh, that's nice. Uh-huh. And then we get back on the moped, and I can feel her shaking while Whoa. driving. It was a very uh, romantic moment. Yeah, it's powerful. Very intense. Got her adrenaline jacked. Oh, yeah. And you could hear her like doing her gay sniffles behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the great moment of pulling the moped up to the house, and then we get to tell the whole family, and the mom right. goes crazy, and the dad shakes the hand. It was. Did fun. you do the dad cool. thing? Did you ask for permission? I totally forgot to do that. A lot of people think it's antiquated. Okay. Most of my friends don't do it anymore. I'll take it. Yeah. It's like an old school thing, because yeah. it's like, I guess the way it's been described to me is like, well, that means she belongs to the dad. I don't think that's ah. the case. Oh, good point. Mm-hmm. I'm very progressive. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you're on the cutting edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he would have said yeah anyway. So. Yeah, but, that's nerve wracking too, because that's almost like two proposals right, then. Hey, right. <clears throat> now he knows about it. I like it when it's a secret. Mm-hmm. Do you have a whole speech prepared? No, no. No. You just went straight into it. Straight in. Yeah. I was so nervous. I was just like, let's just knock it out. Yeah. And you're a motorcycle guy, right? I got a moped, a scooter. It looks like a. It almost looks like a dirt bike, right? It is. I think it's from the '80s, so they didn't want it to look too queefy. So they mm. they like. Yeah, it's got a more it masculine aesthetic to it. Yeah, it ain't no Vespa. It's almost that Benjamin Button bike that he's riding when he turns young oh, at the yeah. end. Hey, New Orleans too. That's right. Yeah, uh, I was a PA on that movie. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's pretty crazy. That's a it big ass movie. Huge movie. And it was right after Katrina, so the city was in hell, and we needed some some love. So mm-hmm. Hollywood came in, and we had Brad Pitt out there. We had uh, and he was building Andrew houses Fincher. out there simultaneously, which I heard have turned to like crap. But... Yeah, they weren't. It was a lot of photo op shit. But God mm. bless the effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peing's a tough gig. I did that for a couple of years. Oh, lock it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I hear. Lock it up. What about when they go switch to two because someone's going to get yelled at? Oh, yeah. And then I would always switch to two so I could <laughs> I could overhear the scolding. That's what yeah. I call it when I'm taking a piss and I'm like, I have to shit. <laughs> so I'm switching to two. But, uh, Let me listen next time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fun fact, the streetcar wasn't running. The streetcar is like a big iconic thing in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. It wasn't running, but with the movie Magic... They got a streetcar back on the track, and they were pulling it with a big chain and a, and a big truck. Wow. And they're like, David Fincher is there in the director's chair with the big horn, like out of a movie. And he's like, we have one shot at this. We have one take. We got to get it. This is costing us $8 million and all this shit. So they go, here we go. They shoot the whole thing. They do it perfectly. And some guy forgot to put film in the camera. They fired him. I got to see wow. the whole thing. Wow. He threw his hat on the ground. He's like, you never work in this town again. It was, it was How do you fuck really? that up? I don't know. I don't know. So did they ever reshoot it, or it's just not in the movie? I think they did, but it cost them like another $8 million. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. That's a big fuck up. Good times. Is that what you did while you were starting out? You were peeing and all that kind of stuff? Uh, this was way before comedy. I just uh, yeah. I loved movies, and I wanted to be Woody Allen and fuck a, yeah. an Asian daughter. But uh, I just wanted to go that route, the movie route. So I start, I'll start at the bottom. And then mm-hmm. I went to film school. And then I realized how much collaborating movies are. Yeah. So then I started doing stand up, and I was like, this is so much better because you can just write a joke and go tell it. Right. Whereas, like, getting an actor, a writer, a gaffer, and all that. No, it gives you the most control over the outcome. Definitely. Do you still have uh, aspirations to, like, direct or act or anything like that? I can't act. I kind of hate acting. Uh, I would rather direct, mm-hmm. definitely, than act. But to me, documentary was, was what I wanted to do. Oh. Same. I oh, went to yeah? film school for documentary. Same. I think it was because I was a class clown, and I was like, oh, if I go for documentary, there's like a level of importance to that <laughs> or like sophistication. <laughs> right. It's not as like uh, obvious as being like, I want to be an entertainer. It's like, no, I want to you know do journalism and make an impact. <laughs> right, yeah, no, I completely get that. Um, and also, I feel like documentaries have... Skyrocket. There wasn't as many when I was into it. There was like ten. There was like Hoop Dreams, uh, when we were kings, and then like a couple about Enron, <laughs> yeah, and that exactly. was it. Exactly. Thin Blue Line. Yeah, that was a great one. Yeah, yeah, but there weren't there weren't many. So now they're like there's one a week, mm-hmm. and they're great. And they're all like ten hours now yeah. too. That they really milk them for like every detail. Totally, totally. I do wonder about these true crime ones though. Like, isn't it a little in like all these true crime podcasts? Too, isn't it a little insensitive to the families? That mm. they keep trudging up, like, these horrible kind of experiences that like, they went through. The Dahmer show, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. They, they really, I, I, didn't, I didn't watch it, but I think they really got graphic with the 
killing scenes. Oh, yeah. I watched it. I watched you it watch while it? I cooked. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's good yeah. Watch. it was great. Now. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, it was really the acting was amazing. But I wanted that too, and I think it's so strange that like comedy is. And I don't want to sound like some pundit, no, but comedy's baby. like. Always get, hey, that joke's offensive. Hey, you said retard. Hey, you said this. And you're like, mm-hmm. well, we also watch pedophile serial killer documentaries constantly. Mm-hmm. Right. Eating popcorn. Yeah. Like, they're like, the Michael Jackson doc is out. I'm like, I don't want to watch that. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it either. I didn't watch like, it. They pull the kid's ass, ass cheeks oh, apart. Oh, really? I'm like, <laughs> part of it. I'm going, why are you, this is your entertainment, but then if I say homo on stage, I'm, I'm the public enemy number one right and you've never done a bad thing it's like it's a different thing it's weird it's wacky our, our priorities are all out of whack i also think like the, the michael jackson thing i already thought he was guilty i don't need to watch it yeah. like if i thought he was innocent okay then maybe it's important because it can convert me but like didn't 90 percent of the world already like it's michael jackson we knew he was doing fucked up yeah, shit yeah yeah and, and the music's great <laughs> you know like r kelly the music's good uh, kevin spacey's a hell of an actor One of the subway best. makes a decent sub i you know <laughs> yeah. if this product is good it's good i can separate subway's it. lowest on that I, list well, yeah that's, for I, sure. that's true i can go to quiz now good I, point. I do think Let subway went downhill after uh fogo got locked up i think so too I, but i think there's a correlation didn't yeah. you know? You had an I instinct. Knew, you know, I saw Jared Fogle early on. I really? told my brothers, I was like, this guy is not good. <laughs> I watch him in commercials. I'm like, I'm sure he's diddling kids. You could you could sense it? I can sense things like that. But okay. Here's a question, though. Are you going to watch the Michael Jackson biopic? A biopic I love. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I, I just worry they're going to skew into this pedophile well, stuff. Well, his... his uh, I think his nephew is playing him, so I don't know if they're going to... That would be, be interesting, though, if his relative... Yeah, was like, yeah, that'd be yeah they sold him out like that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I know how to do this, but it's in the... It's in the and they're going to cast all the victims' relatives, too, so yeah. it's going to be all... It's all yeah, they got Wade Robson in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got my Kieran Culkin. <laughs> yeah. Kieran Culkin. <laughs> did, that, did something happen to Kieran Culkin? Well, Macaulay was apparently oh, in the bed with him right. a few times. Oh, copy that. Yeah. <laughs> do you think you have a good radar for like when something's off with a person? Or? Oh, yeah. You can I tell. think so. Yeah, Where yeah. Where is it? Yeah. The eyeballs or the shoulders? Well, I think it's mostly it's a lot of overcompensation. If somebody's mm. real hard swinging one way, then something's going on the other way. Yeah. Right. Look at Cosby. Yeah. Cosby's yeah. pull your pants up, uh, put on a sweater, don't curse, and then he's knocking chicks out. Then you got Ellen, who's like, I'm all fun and games. I dance. I hug everybody. Cutesy tootsy. And then she's, you know, the biggest cunt on the planet backstage. We were lucky enough to do that show. Best run show I've ever been on. Well, of course. Yeah. She's a fucking Nazi regime over there. <laughs> yeah. The Nazis were efficient. I wouldn't want to work there, but not a bad place to visit. It was yeah. uh, good vibes. Yeah. Right. That, that is the thing, though, the super nice comics on stage. Mm-hmm. You just know. Uh, and I... Who is in the? Uh, but uh, but then like the really like hard like David Tell I I've never met him but I heard he's like the sweetest the guy sweetest guy gives gifts to the staff uh, tips yeah. huge uh, yeah. so nice to younger comics but yet his act is filthy so yeah. there you know because we always talk about Cosby but there is the other way too like some like Jezelnik he's very yeah. dark on stage but he's a nice guy mm-hmm. in, right in real life they get it out they're not repressed yeah Clink I mean Seinfeld runs a cockfighting ring. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Have you met Seinfeld? Yeah, I had lunch with him uh, about two weeks ago. Or Have breakfast. you performed in front of him? Yeah, yeah. What's you haven't heard like? the story? You opened for oh, him. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, it's a hell of a story. I'll yeah. tell you later, but yeah, I've yeah. told it before on pods. But it is, uh, he yelled at me, yeah. and it's very surreal. Like what? I used to watch this guy when I was 11 in my living room with my parents, and now he's <laughs> yelling at me in the... <laughs> In a backstage Wait, in the why, theater. Can you tell us now why, why do you get upset at you? I fucked up on stage, and I, I, he gives you, he's like, you got to do this amount of time, mm-hmm. and there's no light or clock, so you just have to know it. Wow. There's no light. Why no light or clock? Well, I, I think he's kind of under the impression, like, you're a professional comic. You should know how much time you're doing. Oh, right? interesting. I was like, okay. It's a lot of press. It is, especially when you're opening for him. Yeah. yeah. So I fucked up, but I went short because I was so scared of going long. Yeah. I was like, I better just go short. That's safer. Yeah. But I went so short that he wasn't there. He wasn't mm-hmm. ready by the side of the stage. Right. So I, was, I didn't know what to do, and I panicked, and I went back out. Oof. And that was a huge mistake because now they're like, oh, we already – don't know you we're waiting for this guy and now yeah. you're back yeah and so i started getting heckled and then it just kind of the whole show kind of crumbled and then i ran off stage and he was like what are you doing yeah so then he went on and killed and then he came back and oh but he did all right yeah he killed yeah because they were so happy to see him right they hated me <laughs> yeah you almost set him up better by coming out Maybe, twice yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then okay no you go baby when did you guys come back together and 
We texted the next day and, and worked it out, and I think it actually brought us closer in a weird way. That's I do cool. a conflict and resolution. I'm a big believer in it. I think totally all the good friendships you got to go through those things where you like express the hard parts, and then you get the stuff out of the way, and all of a sudden you're really bonded. I 100 percent agree. Yeah, and we avoid conflict now all the time, so I think uh, we could use a little conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we think it's like always a bad thing, but but yeah. it doesn't mean anything serious. It's like no. like Boston people. We saw it when we visited. Like yeah. these guys were yelling at each other, and then like two seconds later, they're like, "It's all good, man. Just yeah. keep it going." That's better. And I think we we avoid conflict and we avoid discomfort. And I think mm-hmm. they're both necessary. Yeah. And now with the phone, everything is so comfortable that when we're a little discomfortable or uncomfortable, we flip. Mm-hmm. Do you TikTok? Like, do you watch TikTok a lot or I try Instagram? Not to touch TikTok. That I shit have makes one. me sad. I pay a guy to do it, and I don't look. I don't look at it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they call it digital fentanyl. It's the new term. Yeah, <laughs> it just sucks you in. You, you lose eight hours. Yeah, yeah. My lady's on it all day, and I'm like. I never get to talk to her. What, yeah. And the comments in the the videos will get to me, and they'll change my perspective on things. But then I wonder, who are the people making these? It's always yeah, the course. saddest people. Of like, course. Like, like with relationship stuff, they'll be like, never trust anyone. Like, I got burned this way, this way. And it's never a positive thing. It's always just like a bummer thing. And I'm like, is this the world? That and, is the world. And then you think how many hours and hours people are just putting into these videos, setting up cameras, girls dancing, and you're like, man, if TikTok didn't exist – you would have figured something else out. Mm, you yeah. would be uh, exercising or playing piano or reading or something. Or yeah. just jacking off. Or jacking but off. But that's fun, but too. That's good, and that's healthy. <laughs> yeah, I think a school shooter or two could, could jerk it and maybe yeah. be a little better off. <laughs> yeah, do you think the NoFap movement is responsible for school oh, shooters? Ooh, I never thought about that. <laughs> Dude, I've heard they're all Fapstronauts. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you might have something there. Fap yeah. it up, kids. Yeah, if you, <laughs> yeah. if you crack one off that day, you're gonna put the gun down and just yeah, go to school yeah, with yeah. The exactly. Backpack. Fap it up. We'll get Louie to be the spokesperson. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was, I was, I want to ask you about Luke because you were in Horace and P. I think it's like some of those episodes. I think are some of like the best. That's incredible. Like uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's not quite a TV show. Like sort of in between a movie. Yeah. But they're dramedy, beautiful. And, and was it? And I, and I think I heard you describe it on the podcast. You didn't even know if you were going to be on that day because he was just kind of running and gunning it. Mm-hmm. What did it feel like to be on set doing those bits? So out of my league. I felt like I was an, at an orgy with supermodels, and I was the <laughs> nerd with the tiny dick. Yeah, because it's like Steve Buscemi and like Edie Falco. I don't know, like just Insane. killing actors. Alan Alda called me a, a cocksucking <laughs> which was I called my parents. I was like, Alan Alda said this to me. And they're like, Whoa, that's crazy. Was that scripted or was that? <laughs> no, that was a riff. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was scripted. And then afterwards, you get like good riff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, no, just uh, I met Louis at the cellar. This is you know pre-cancel mm-hmm. when he was the guy. He was the best. No one was ever bigger. Yeah, no one. He's at the Oscars. He's you know doing all these movies. So he I bumped into the cellar. I was so nervous, and he goes. What'd you do tonight? And I was sitting there with him. I was like, I did a couple sets. He's like, how many? I did five. And he's like, you did five sets where? And I was like, I'll give you a list of spots. And he, I gave him my email. He emailed me the next day, and I really worked on this thing like a college paper. And I, I wrote every single underground room that only I knew about. And I wrote like the rating and how many people it holds. And I wrote wow. all these detailed uh, kind of reviews of every show. And I sent it to him. And I think he was so impressed that he was like, Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, ah, I'm just hanging out. He goes, I'm gonna text you, and he didn't tell me why. So I went out that night and got hammered. Woke up the next day, hung over with a text from him, and it was like, here's my address. Can you come by today? And I was like, ah. So I put clothes on. I brushed my teeth. I went over there, opened the door. It's Edie Falco. It's Alan Alda. It's Steve Buscemi. It's all these comics. And I was like, what the fuck is this? He goes, read this script. I'm at Louis's dinner table reading a script with Alan Alda. Wow. Insane. Yeah. And then we went and shot it like a week later. Um, I, I, Were you like a, a big, when I saw you at Meltdown like 10 years ago, you were a little bit cleaner back then, right? You think? I yeah, feel like right. it. Yeah. You might be right. Do you think, do you, think you got like edgier because you got just more comfortable with it or do you think you were reacting to the kind of like crunch that people were doing on that sort of performing? I think as a younger guy, you kind of have to, Ease your way in. You can't come out edgy out of the gate as a new guy because they're like, Geez, who's you're this a psychopath. Psycho. Yeah. yeah. So you have to play the game. It's like with a lady. You can't go up to a girl and go, I'd like to eat your ass. You got to go, can that. I buy you Zero dinner? Out of 100. It yeah. doesn't work. Never works. Which is weird because they like getting their ass eaten. No, and so they tell you they want 
they're they're like, tell me that what you want to do, and I'm like, let's go back to your place and oh, have sex. That's never crazy. worked. Never, never worked. worked. Very, women are very strange. <laughs> but uh, so you got to go. Hey, can I buy you dinner? Well, what do you do? What's your sign? All that retarded stuff. And then <laughs> two weeks later, you're putting a lampshade up her ass. You know, like, yeah. it's, it's just crazy. And it's the same with comedy. I think it's in your career, you got to come out. Hey, I'm okay. I'm a nice guy. I'm clean. I'm accessible. You can trust me. Mm-hmm. You can trust me. And then as you get accepted, you can be a little more yourself. Even right. Louis. Louis is a perfect example of that. Or Bill Burr. He was Billy right. Burr. He was clean, and now he's like, you know, bald, bald and red-faced and angry. Right. Are you a big preparation guy? Because one thing that stuck with me that you said is that during your first Rogan appearance, you you prepped for a while for that. Big prep. Yeah. Big prep. That was the best, biggest year of my career. Open for Seinfeld. Got Rogan and put out a special. Mm-hmm. So it was like this trifecta that really launched me. But, uh, yeah, I went on Rogan. I was like, I'm I'm going to really write out. I wrote out every crazy story. Mm-hmm. I wrote it on the puke bag on the plane. It's a six-hour flight. Yeah. So I wrote it all out, and I was just like, remember these in case it's a lull, in case it's boring, so I won't have a bad ep. Mm-hmm. Do you write every day? For stand up? I tried to and I've really slacked off a little, so I gotta I'm getting back into it. I hit uh, yesterday I wrote, today I'm gonna write when I go back. Uh and I just put out a special or I recorded one, so mm-hmm. I need new material bad. Yeah. When when you're writing like uh I just read the Seinfeld book, like of his jokes that he wrote, and I was like Is this anything? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And I was just marveling at like the economy of it because he doesn't waste like lines. Do you like free write or are you writing it as like it's a joke? I talk it out and then I mm. write I just write the bullet point. Right. So I'll just I'll be like, all right, can of water, and I'll just pace back and forth in my apartment like a fucking psycho with a hairbrush. Wow. And I'm like, can of water, what's up? Oh, with so that? you pretend talking to yeah, that? Yeah, it's really embarrassing. No, you... I, I do that too. I, I oh, got, really? I got a mic stand from Guitar Center. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. It works way better because when you write it out, it'll sound funny in your head. It's stiffer. Yeah, but then when you say it, you just. New words come. It, it just yes, it you, flows. It flows. You got you got. I think with anything, uh, performance wise, you gotta you gotta talk it out. I agree, and I'm still yeah. scared of audiences. I'm still scared of perform. Every audience is a new audience, so I'm, yeah. I still get nervous. So if I say it in my house a bunch, it comes out cleaner. But if I wrote it and then I try to say it how I wrote it, it's like jumbled and weird. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think I gotta talk it out. Yeah. I'm. I uh, do you do you go off off script a lot? Uh, not a not a ton. I'm doing it now. It's just cause I'm trying to find anything up there because I'm, yeah. I'm so uh, out of material. But I pretty much stay written. Yeah, because I, I I'm trying to do that more. Because but I have the same thing where it's like a, a, anytime I get into like unknown territory, I kind of like oh yeah lock up. Same same. And I'll just be like, all right. I'll just go back to your written bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you, if you push through, you can get somewhere. I've been fine because we started touring last year, so having those longer sets. It's like it's now now I you, you know cuz when you're here you're also in you're like LA or New York it's like you feel like people are watching you that totally. are important or whatever and you want to like do a good set but then when you're out there you're in Spokane you're like all right I can yeah. just fucking no stakes they can be free to to breathe a little <laughs> yeah yeah that's why you got to do the road yeah do you think you'll ever do like a biographical i mean i know you always talk about your life but do you think you'll ever do like the kind of more one man showy version of nah, it nah probably not i i don't find myself that interesting so like i don't Think they will. Which is rare for comedians, because I, I feel guess. like the majority of us are like, no, no, I have a very <laughs> unique life that needs to be. Well, I'm jealous of those, com- you know, those comics who like get into a car accident, are like I got a new ten minutes here, you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't have that at all. <laughs> you get out of the it. car accident, and then you just start doing something about fenders. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I would find, I would zone in on some weird specific about a right. car accident. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, these comics who like, oh, they, they, you know, they shit, they go on a date and shit themselves. They have like a new story. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't have that. I can't do that. Yeah. And, and I guess I tried doing that for a while too, where I was like living for the story, but I was like, I think I just need to write more because it was getting too destructive for my actual day to day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now you're looking for something crazy. Yeah. I was just being a piece of shit. Cause I didn't know how else to like generate material right right yeah. <laughs> yeah. and i had no friends and my family was ashamed of me and i was like there's got to be a better way yeah yeah no i think there's pros and cons to both but my my way is very like it's I think it's the same as seinfeld where like he's so word word to word mm-hmm. that's why it takes him forever uh to put out new material <laughs> because he's just so meticulous and i have i'm not as bad as him but i have a little of that too have you gone overseas and done your stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. I've been to Australia. I've been to China. Um, I did the the troops, whatever that is. Oh, that's uh, got to be Qatar. nice, right? 
Yeah, it was a little weird. I, it really bummed me out over there. Really? How it's, so? it's just bleak and sandy, and there's like giant murals of these stupid sultan guys and the, the, mm. the garb with the flowy whatever. And it's just so primitive, you know, with like the hate gays and the women treatment. Mm-hmm. And it's all about how much money you have. It's We got it good here. I know we shit on America. I know everybody hates America, but... I I defy you to move. Sorry, this is my um, patriotic alarm. <laughs> no, I was thinking about like people were like, we haven't made like enough progress since like the civil rights movement, and I, and I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, but we have had one. Like, have they had one in Qatar? <laughs> Good ever? point. Good point. We've like, made a ton of progress, and no one wants. To, we've had black president two terms. Yeah. What do you want? We got a, a female vice president. I think is Indian. We're doing great. <laughs> but we can't admit it. You don't think she's Indian. I mean, we got our problems, sure. We got uh, the shootings and the, the whatnot. That's crazy. It's such a uniquely American thing that we yeah. have. That. I do a bit about it where I'm like, we need to invite those guys over for beers more, like hang out with them. Like, who? you know, the school shooters. Like, oh. you, you, know, you know who they're going to be. It's not surprising. That's But true. now it's actually, it's people who don't even go to the schools now. It's, it's gone I know. like. The 28-year-old in yeah. uh, Tennessee. Oh, like, they're yeah. just going to the schools now to do it. It's yeah. really. Uh, unexplainable. It's kooky. This, or it is explainable, but it's hard to know. I think it's why a copycat it's thing. Like once a, a few people did it, you get the name on the news, and you're like, all right, it's that, doable. That's it's what like Malcolm the... Gladwell said in an article. It's oh, like really? Our brains get ob- certain kinds of brains get obsessed with ideas, and if they see it enough, they zero in on it, mm. and it just takes them over. It's the four minute mile. Yeah. You know, yeah. once you, or the the, the nine hundred with Tony Hawk. Like once somebody can do it, now everybody can nine hundred. Yeah, right? Jake's doing a nine hundred. Exactly. What do you think he the looks next like thing will be? Ooh, that's a good question. How do we evolve from school shooting? <laughs> yeah. yeah something better. We need a new sport. You know what we should do is maybe like put it in the Olympics or something. Uh, just yeah, just yeah. Uh, at least capitalize on it because we're the only country. It's like jazz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's jazz. Yeah, it's our jazz. It's our jazz. Stand-up comedy, jazz, school shootings. Yeah. Well, well, really I don't American. understand a couple of those things. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah good point. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather school shooting than listen to jazz. <laughs> what, what was China like? Did they understand your humor? Well, it was a lot of expats or whatever you call it, a lot of right, students, right. a lot yeah. of Americans. But the Chinese, they're so much smarter than us. So like, they, were, they would have Chinese people who were born there whose English was better than mine. Wow. Dude, I went to an acting school here, and they China had sent a kid over to learn American acting. He could play piano. He could box. He could do any voice. Wow. He was like 19 years old. He blew us all out of the water. Really? Yeah. Like, he wasn't auditioning for parts. I don't think he was allowed to. They were going to set him back to being like their homeland productions but Mm -hmm. his skill set was insane yeah well a fun fact about china they're only allotted three hours a day for tiktok so even they know it's fucked up right we can do it all day every day it's a free country and and their algorithm is like they don't for kids they don't allow you to see what like i watch fart videos same on instagram queefs all day i love love them thank you he doesn't no yeah i don't (laughs) (laughs) i love but um yeah, there. I think they, there's it's like there's just like educational. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like this is how you build a rocket. Exactly. And they're <laughs> smart, smart of them. Yeah. Then they play the cello, the violin, the tiger moms. I mean. But do they have personalities? No. And we they steal all our art. We yeah. have better art, I yeah. think. Yeah, and I think so. we're tops. Yeah. Everyone's kind of chasing our culture, right? You got that right. And some people are, I went to Australia. There's probably someone in Norway who's like, we don't give a shit. Probably, yeah. But we don't give a shit about him either. <laughs> Ikea cunt. Yes, Ben. But uh, I was in Australia 2015, and I remember walking into a nightclub, like nightclub, you know, mm-hmm. velvet rope, the whole thing. And uh, they were playing Sublime. And I remember being like, yeah. it's 2015, you're playing Sublime. You go to a nightclub here, it's like Lil Yachty or some bullshit, mm-hmm. you know, some hip black hip hop and over there it was sublime in 2015 i yeah. couldn't believe it yeah i'm a huge you, sublime guy do you Same. find that australians try to flex on you for how much harder they party yeah yeah they can booze those guys well, are animals I, I went to australia and like we were on the tour we like the second we got there the tour guide was like really adamant about how much more they drink <laughs> and we were like i didn't understand <laughs> i was like why do you have to tell us this at the top yeah, well, they they do party, and whenever they come to shows in New York, a lot of Australian tourists, they're the worst audience because they're oh. like, oi, 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 and shit faced to right. ruin the show. They're a little too participatory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you must be so stoked too, like, because I've, I've been listening to you guys for so long, and like, I've heard you and like Joe Liss and Sam Marill, like talk about the industry and like how it didn't always feel like a meritocracy, and now you guys are all crushing it. Like, oh, you guys yeah. are all like the dudes. Well, I still don't think it's a meritocracy. I do think success-wise, but industry-wise, they're mm. so nervous about like filling quotas and checking boxes that right. they're booking a lot of shit. Mm. But, and which is weird, because it's funny, 
black people and women and and uh, but they're not, Asian. You've but they're not picking, even picking yeah. like, oh, they're black. Put them on. So right. Like, which is also kind of oddly racist. Racist in its own way because they're not really exactly. But now we have the internet. So pre-internet, we were all like, what are we going to do? They, they won't tap us on the shoulder. They're not using us. Mm-hmm. But now we have the internet, so it's like, fuck it, we'll just blow past them. Mm-hmm. We have our own outlet, which did, we didn't before. Did you find as a as a New York comic, it's, I feel like putting out I, – I is there something about being a New York comic where it's like um, – there's something like the idea of putting out clips on social media is like kind of not cool? Uh, no, I mean, we, no. you know, Stam, me, Liz, Stavros, Soder. But, but before you guys, like, that whole thing blew up, was mm. that, like, was there a resistance to that? Uh, definitely a resistance. I think there's a resistance to every new thing. Yeah. Especially with, with comics, because we're so stubborn and lazy. Yeah. And because it was a certain way, and we don't want it to be a new way. Yeah, yeah. And I think also it was about burning material. Why am I going to burn material? Why am I going to put a clip up? I need to save it for my special. But now we figured out crowd work, topical, mm-hmm. you know, audience reaction stuff, so... Right. You can work around the that whole thing, yeah. But then there's some people who are just grandfathered in, like Bill Burr. He doesn't put clips up. Yeah, John Mulaney doesn't put clips up. Well, no, they don't need to. Like Burr, uh, Netflix kind of. Yeah, I feel like that's what launched him. Oh, for sure. But I, I do feel like the Netflix era of like launching comics is kind of has kind of passed. Kind of passed. Yeah, <coughs> Netflix will help a giant. Like if Chappelle puts one out, everybody yeah. watches yeah. Chris Rock. But as a new comic, those Ali Wong Segura pops might be over. I, yeah, I, I did it. Um, whoa, my thought got away from me. Oh, it happens, <laughs> dude. No, this is what I was gonna say. Hey, you Killer, got it back. bro. I was actually just about to fart, and then I no. <laughs> I did, <laughs> yeah. did uh, do you think doing podcasts has that changed? Because a lot of the people you mentioned, like Melanie and guys like that, they they don't do podcasts mm-hmm. that often. And do you ever feel like podcasting so often is affecting your stand up? Are you able to keep them? kind of distinct from one another i think it's affecting it time wise and kind of a mental fatigue because you know you do two pods in a day and you're like Whew, i'm wiped you're like how many ideas do i have yeah yeah and you just have to keep your brain going and talking and i think that hurts the writing a little mm-hmm. but then on the flip side podcasts well, somebody had a great line they said if you're on tv people will be a fan of yours but if you're on the radio people know you yeah, yeah. it's it's a close connection yeah so i think podcasts has really helped with that because Originally, stand-up comedy was like, oh, I like Mitch Hedberg. This guy's awesome, and I'll go see him. But now it's like, oh, man, I listened to this guy on a pod for eight hours of different podcasts or Rogan or whatever, and now I'm like, I got to go meet this guy. I got to go hang with this guy. Right. Yeah. So it's a different kind of connection. Yeah, for us, they like the Q&A part the most because it's like interactive, and they ask us about yes. our personal lives and stuff like that. Of course. Which there's a part of me, like the, the ego part of me, that's like, no, I want the stand-up to be the best part. But, I mean, if they're enjoying it, they're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, and I think you give them a little treat at the end. That's what I do. I do the stand-up, and I feel bad for audiences because I, I still, even though I love stand-up, I assume they're kind of bored. You know, yeah. it's a guy on stage going, so what's up with chairs? Chairs are weird. <laughs> you know, and sure, you might get some laughs, but when you do the Q&A, now it's like a really all-inclusive, interactive thing. It's living and breathing, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. But you can't give them too much, you know, because yeah. you don't want that to be, be become your whole act. Yeah. Right? You know, you still want to be a stand-up. There's interesting. I, I've had that thought, too, about stand-up, where you're just, people will come out to see you, and you're like, I've had that thought, too. I'm like, aren't you going to get bored? Like, don't you want to see, like, a rock band or something? That exactly. way more sick. Yeah. But, but I appreciate I, I But I've been bored at stand-up com- shows and still had a good time yeah. afterwards. Okay. Like, it's, it's a night out. That's true. It's true. It's a night out. Yeah, I think I, I, I place too much, like, of my, uh, how much time I've spent with stand-up. I put it on them. Whereas mm-hmm. I remember when I first went to the improv in, like, 20. 20- 13 or something when I was like new to the whole world it like blew my mind just just seeing people on stage oh really yeah all like, right even when someone had a bad set in my, I was like wow that guy that guy bombed like, yeah that, that's really cool to see it is it's you fascinating know? in a different way yeah yeah so like it didn't bother me that he bombed yeah and then when someone was fun just someone talking on stage and making you laugh is so if it's you don't crazy. see it a lot it is crazy it's crazy it's, it's almost like m- word magic yeah. Like we all seen a magic show, and you're like, whoa, that was awesome. He pulled that out of that hat or whatever. But with word magic, you're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. yeah. So you, But that's but there's so many bad comics now is right. the problem. So I think yeah. people go to a show, and they're like, all right, that was fine. I paid $70 for a bad margarita and a chicken wing and listen to a guy. <laughs> yeah. But mm-hmm. if you see good stand-up, it is, it's like transcendent. I just watched uh, Kyle Kinane. He's got a new special. He's amazing. So underrated. Yeah. And it was like, I was, I was like, uh, 
in a comatose, not a coma, a hypnosis. I was just yeah. like, oh my God, this is yeah. so en- entertaining. And I was like flowing with him. It's, he it's took over your thing. brain for a bit. Yes. Yeah. It was an escape. That's nice. What, what do you think has created all these bad comics? I think it's the internet. And I think yeah. comedy is like a, a, a viable means of, of a profession now. You right. know? Yeah. Is it kind of like the people who, it's for a lot of people, it's like this is their second, like the second part of their career or yeah. sort of like, oh, I got famous on youtube like a i should Shivo. do stand up oh yeah oh yeah. i see so it's like it's like and now i can i should get on stage because you can make money touring yeah which i look i get it i don't fault them for that but i do think the internet uh stand-up was like a big kind of it was a risk like yeah. oh am i gonna be a stand-up i have to lose 10 years of my life and do open mics and get good and hustle yeah. it was a little more outlaw now it's yes. like uh, and i major. the outlaw no, yeah. me too. Because it was the the diehards who you had to you had to need stand up. Once yeah. I wanted you had to need it, and now it's like I'll try this. This will be yeah. a fun hobby. And yeah. I like the guys who weren't as famous who just like yes. found glory in like the itinerant lifestyle, and were just like I'm just out there banging it out for exactly. weirdos. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was like drag racing. You know, like yeah. some guys like I, I stay up all I stay up all night drag racing for pinks. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I might get hurt, but fuck it. Yeah. I think the world's also hip to it now that maybe that was always kind of a romantic outlook on yeah. it. Yeah, and, and like. I think stand-ups almost got so popular that now, like, I, I'll go on, like, Reddit with people who, like, hate stand-ups and just, like, kind of... I don't know why I gorge myself on There's that stuff. There's a lot of that shit. Yeah, but they're kind of just, like, undercutting the entire, like, profession of it. In a way what? that maybe is healthy. Because, I get. Yeah. There's just so many bad ones, so I think they see a lot of horrible comedy. Yeah. And even Netflix, this huge corporation, puts out a lot of shit. Yeah. No offense, I'm doing a special with them. We have a show that just came out. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. But oh, you're <laughs> the guy who watched it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I liked it. My yeah. lady, my lady loves you guys. Oh, that's oh, cool. that's nice. Um, but yeah, there's so much bad stand up, so I think it, it is hard. Like improv gets a lot of shit. But if yeah. you've ever seen a great improv show, Dude, it's amazing. It's yes. amazing. Yeah. They're geniuses. Like yeah. they'll they'll make a whole play up on the spot with like acts and twists totally. and turns and it's a whole different kind of brain to be able to do that. Yeah. But the but the hang is a little brutal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But <laughs> but there's a lot of bad. I'd say it's like ninety five to five percent mm-hmm. bad to good. Right. There's so much bad. But uh, they got a tough a ratio one. over there. Yeah. But like movies are, you know, it's almost like fifty fifty. Yeah. You know. You see that in the, the open mics now. It's what? like when we started coming up in open mics, it was like you'd go to like Van Nuys, you go to like these just random play, like bars and in strip malls and shit, where it's just like it felt like underground and cool yeah and now it's like a more it feels like i want to say corporate but it's like there's like a structure and like everyone has to stay for an hour and it's not like it's not like that like random bar where like you had like old drunks like i i I completely agree when we when i did open mic there was always a heroin addict who would go on it was like part of it it was it was like misfits and degenerates in this basement yeah now it feels very clean and i see comics posting shit like i saw a comic say on stage and that's yeah. in a, and I'm like you might be in the wrong business there yeah. buddy you like, know what's bugging me too and y'all are it's like really handsome people and pretty people oh, are, are progressing crazy, quickly crazy. because because it looks great on TikTok and Instagram yes and I'm like if you would have come up through the open mic scene people would have checked you and been like we're not letting them through unless they really prove it because there would have been this kind of like oh, 100%. aversion to letting like a good looky come through yeah but now and maybe unfairly and now they've bypassed that yes. and the audience gloms onto them because they look like they belong on like a CW show right, and I'm right. like you know there was a time that wasn't okay you could feel the <laughs> hate I remember you could feel that they're like you're privileged I know it yeah you know, and like, you, you, your name's Chad now and I'm like yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah you're well, that's what's good about you guys you guys are both attractive dudes but oh, in thanks. totally different ways oh thank, oh, thank you. you totally you, you almost have a Semitic good looks and you were more Aryan <laughs> yeah oh, dude, that's the combo, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah that's the, the yin and yang yeah, scheme yeah, yeah. 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 it's more masculine more so, feminine yeah, yeah. something for everybody <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're like Victor Rizouk and Brian Greenberg on how to make it in America. Deep cut, deep cut. Oh did you, wow, I forgot about that. Did show. you see Air? No, I hear it's great. Because I think you would fucking love that movie. Because I heard you on I, uh, on Pete Holmes's podcast, and you said, "Give me a movie with just a guy who has a job." Yes, and that is Air, dude. Okay, like Damon's got a belly in it. He's fat. Ooh, I'm in. I love like that's kind of a biopic e kind of yeah. movie. I love movies like that about this this come up. And it's yeah. just guys working, trying to do their best. They're not great guys, but they're not bad guys. There is no bad guys. It's I'm just in. life's just kind of shitty sometimes. I'm, I will watch that uh, as soon as it comes on a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you go to the theaters much? I used to go all the time. It was like my favorite outing, but now I, I just, I think I perform so much that I'm like, I'm not going out. 
you know. Right. I don't like to go out anymore. I'm nesting. I'm just I, know. I hang out at home all day with my girl and and like sometimes I'll get like a a thought where I'm like it'd be nice to go out, but then when I actually like think about doing it, I'm like I can't do it. Yeah, and also we stare at a screen all day, then we watch TV, then we look at our laptop. So I like the idea of going to another screen is too much. So if I do go out, I want to like socialize. I want to go right. to a dive bar or a party or something. Has Rogan got you in any of the crossbow nah, kicking ass not ice for me. bath and shit? Ah, not really. He's tried, but I I just don't care. <laughs> and that's the thing about Rogan. Like, he gets this bad rap on the media, but he's like the sweetest guy, nicest guy. He's just that, a big yeah. dork. He likes yeah. elk and aliens and bow and arrows. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and he's made DMT. the whole world like that yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's very curious guy. Very interested. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we get into some questions? Oh, guys, I'm interrupting this podcast. Letting you know once again that we are on tour. Some dank shows. I I know the fans who have come have been super psyched on the show. We do stand up. We do a Q and A. You can get super involved in the Q and A. We can give you some life advice in person, live. If you want to see that, we're going to be in Arlington, Virginia this weekend. We're going to be in San Diego the next weekend. We're going to be in Appleton, Wisconsin the weekend after that. We're going to be in Ohio. We're going to be in um, Philadelphia in July. We're coming to Oklahoma. We got tons of dates. We got new dates coming. We got in two weeks, we're going to have a big announcement for new dates. So get your tickets at chatjt.com. We're also brought to you by the Legends Athletic Greens. Guys, I love Athletic Greens. I drink it every day. I drink it this morning with my eggs because I wanted to get all my nutrition in one meal. It tastes good, makes you feel good, makes you look good. There's literally no downside. To athletic greens it's got quality ingredients it's got all your biotics your prebiotics your probiotics your nutrition vitamins minerals whole food source ingredients and it's going to give you that mood support that boosts energy and healthier looking skin hair and nails it is the best and if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements athletic greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase Guys, I'm telling you, go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. It is legit. I'm a huge, huge fan, huge advocate, and I drink it every day, and I want you to, too. All right. Also, guys, call in and leave us a voicemail so you can get your cue on the pod. Um, Leave us a question. Give us an issue you need help with. The number is 323 318-2019. Four one eight two zero one nine. That's three two three four one eight zero two zero one nine. Let me say that again. Three two three four one eight two zero one nine to call the hotline. All right, let's get back to the show. What up, Stokers? Yo. This is Sydney down in Encinitas, and I've been dating my boyfriend for three years now, and he's tooting a lot in his sleep. Whoa! I don't sleep. really know how to bring it up. Oh, this is a good, we got the right team. Would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Break up with him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The, I, I'm sorry. I, I think make fun of him. Yeah, zing him. I, I made fun of my girlfriend the other night for doing that. Oh, yeah? Oh, sorry yeah. to out her. Damn. No, that's sweet. But I, I like, once you once you break that seal, it's hilarious. Yeah, Once agreed. you like, like... It's so much fun. You texted me too, and you said, <laughs> <laughs> "Now that was timing, dude." I think dude. I think you're on performance enhancing drugs. Yeah. I think you are taking stuff before pods, it just, so you got more farts ready. It just came up. <laughs> I had huevos rancheros <laughs> for breakfast. Well, what would you do if your lady grilled you for tooting too much? What would be your response to her? I would say, "Here's what I'll do. I'll just face you, so my asshole is blowing the other way." Right. So yeah. maybe just ask your boyfriend to sleep in a different position. There you go. Keep that ass contained. Yeah. Yeah, keep the hole not directed towards you there, madam. Yeah, because you don't want him to hold in farts and fuck up his stomach. So mm-hmm. I think the key is just to keep you as protected as possible. And he's he's a man. He's a protector by nature. There you go. So he'll fart into a safe space. Yeah, yeah, and make him wear a nylon short, like a basketball short, something yeah. that doesn't have holes in it. Something absorbent. Yeah, yeah, so he won't breathe it out. Like let it let it sit in his shorts. Right. She sounds like she's crazy in love with this dude though. Yeah. He can tell yeah. he's making it work despite the flatulence. Yeah. 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 I think she should Dutch oven him. Oh, that's pretty good too. If she returns yeah. fire, that would get yeah. me to stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not bad. Give him a taste of his own gas. Do you like oh. it when girls fart? No. <laughs> <laughs> My lady will fart, and, and luckily she's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. And I'm like, you should be, whore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I always say I think cry- farting for a woman is like crying for a man. 
you, you know, know, you gotta hide them both. I see. I cry a lot, but I don't fart. I guess I'm feminine. Oh well, you gotta yeah. let it out. Your eyeballs are farting. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're right. sharding. Yeah. Maybe if I start farting, yeah, I'll stop crying. Yeah. All right. You I'll give it a try. Okay. Yeah. My tears smell like shit too. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. Good one, madam. My dog. What's up, brother? Yo. A bit of a dilemma here, man. I'm gonna get straight to the point. I'm a SoCal native. I got Chella tickets coming up. Nice. Typically, always go with uh, another couple, a friend of ours, mine and my ladies. They broke up. They have our tickets. This is great. I'm stuck, man. I don't know what to do. She wants to kick him out and invite another one of her girlfriends, which, I mean, at least in that case, it's not uh, doing him dirty. He's okay with that. Um, But I'm more concerned about myself. I can't be rolling around with a bunch of chicks at Coachella. I mean, if I had a couple of my boys, that'd be a different story, but one dude and three girls? Interesting. This is like a curb plot. Wait, so he has a girlfriend, but she's not coming to Coachella? The girlfriend wants to bring her friend, so it'd be three chicks and him. That sounds kind of cool. That sounds cool. Yeah. You'll look cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine. But he wants to go with a friend. He wants a guy there because he's, he's a guy's guy. And I think he's trying to work it out to where his friend that was initially the couple can still go. Ah. Uh, energy. Would... Right, the energy. And without stereotyping, like, the girls are probably going to want to hit Sahara Tent, and he's going to want to do main stage for some more classic rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. I'm a and, 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 and it, Dude, once you separate a Coachella, there's no getting back together. Phones really? don't work. Is and like. Right? Two hundred thousand people. I mean, it's a it's a zoo. You're not going to find anybody. Whoa. So you got and you got to be careful on solo adventures because you know you if you're mollied out or something, you could get dehydrated. I've seen people drop. It's dangerous. Mm. So it's definitely something he's got to consider. Yeah. Let's do one more. Good luck, yeah. man. Can you get a new bro? Yeah, that's a good point. There you go. And this is also the whitest problem of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gwyneth Paltrow ski courtroom thing, and then this. <laughs> Hey, Chad and JT, and hopefully Strider, maybe Big Hog Joe. Uh, this is Bill <laughs> from South Alabama. Woo, you guys got uh, range. Yeah, man, just calling um, to see if y'all can help me out with something. Uh, so this question is for Strider, if he is there. Uh, if he's not, this question is for specifically Chad. Uh, but, yeah, I just want to see. I got a and O problem. Uh, I'll lay at bed at night, and I'm just, my mind's just racing, and I cannot fall asleep, and then it's not the J.O., and within seconds of getting back in bed after cleaning up the, the spiel, uh, you know, I'm asleep, and I just don't want to do that every night. I don't mm. want to rely on J.N.O., so mm. just give me some help there. Give me some guidance on what to do. If I need to, like, you know, do other things, I will certainly do that. But, yeah, I appreciate uh, y'all's podcast. Y'all bring me joy uh, when I'm in sauna, sweating it out, or maybe when I'm in the gym, pumping out. Um, some iron. So yeah, give me a um, give me some advice. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Mm, tough one. Yeah. I would kill for this problem. I yeah, go ahead. Well, I can't sleep. I have to take all these meds to sleep, and I would mm. kill if it was just something natural like rub one out. What are you mm. rocking, Seroquel or Ambien? Seroquel? I take Seroquel. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 coming off it a little bit though. Me too. I'm hearing all these bad side effects. I've just been on it for years, and I don't want to be on it forever. Yeah. But it helped my life a lot. Like me it, too. It, it, it narrowed the extremes big time in oh, my yeah. behavior. Wow, did you you feel fine, dude? I've been I'm titrating down. I'm down 75 milligrams, and I feel rock solid. Yeah, okay. no side effects. It was one rough day, okay. but I don't even know if it was that or if it was other shit. Right, you know? right. All right. Yeah, I'm nervous because I get all these DMs like, "Get off that shit, man. It's bad." No, mm. yeah, I can't go. Uh, feedback is terrible. I've oh, had like yeah. pharmacists be like, "I can't believe you're doing." It. I'm like, "Dude, don't oh, don't editorialize mm. to me. Just give me the shit." Yeah. Oh no. But I, I haven't had problems on it. Like no okay. sexual side effects, Same. no weight gain. I feel good. Same. Yeah. All right, all right. Sorry. Oh no. I cut you off. You were gonna say something. Um, dude, I, he didn't ask me, but I jack off a lot, so I, I'll weigh in. I think uh, it's not a big deal as long as you can still get rocked up with other people, and you can still be present and able to perform to the best of whatever your abilities are, I don't think it's a big deal if you crack it off before bed. I agree. sounds kind of nice. Agreed. I I think the internet has made us feel ashamed of spraying out. Yeah, maybe. Because I, I, you know, I used to, I I do it a lot still, but I, I like got into that whole like, like you shouldn't jack off too much because Mm. it makes you more focused and whatever. Yeah. And so now whenever I jack off, 
I feel bad. And Are I can't get guilt- that. Guilty? I feel guilty, yeah. Mm. Not as much anymore, but I if I have something important the next day, I try not to because I feel like I won't. Like a boxer. Yeah, I'll feel like I have like less energy. But uh, I would maybe do it every night. You know what I do to go to sleep is I listen to a podcast. Me too. I listen to like Lex. You jack off to it? I jack off to Lex Friedman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yes. uh, <laughs> nice slow jack. Yes. Yeah, so, so jack off to Lex Friedman. Um, yeah, that's my advice. But dude, right. I also take uh, Advil PM. Yeah, I like those too. That works for me. But those wear off after you get immune. Yeah, I try to do it. Uh, I was doing it a lot during COVID, when I, uh, but I try to do it if I'm doing it once or twice a week. But if I have, if we have something big like we did like Jimmy Kimmel or whatever, I took took it for that. Yeah, shit yeah. like that. Where you, you just rest. I just need to get knocked out. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, especially if I'm a little anxious for something the next day. Whatever I can do to get to sleep. It's the I think. Worst. I think too. You got to be uh, to your point. You got to be careful what you tell yourself is a problem. Like, mm. if you're co- saying this is a problem and you're like reaching out on it, I'm like. It's this is kind of nice. You like to jack off. You got a high motor for busting loads. That's healthy. That's healthy. That's good. And I'd be more worried if you're like I can't jack off. It's yes. like this is good. And if this guy's going imagination, like if he's not using porn, this guy's full might, organic. He should be president. Wow. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I trust you with anything. Yeah. Right? Because it's not really the jacking that's the problem. I think it's the porn. And what kind of porn too? Like yes. how savage are you getting with the imagery? Totally. You know, it's a good one. Is OnlyFans leaks. Oh. Ooh, What's they, that? Well, they leak the OnlyFans content. Whoa! Whoa. It's kind of maybe I should Napster. be saying yeah, that you're out loud. Stealing money from Metallica, <laughs> but, uh, Napster. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. I don't know if I should say that out loud, but it takes away the guilt Not of paying for it. Kablam, Although dude. I do like the idea of compensating these ladies. Sure. More than the porn was given them. I don't care. To the <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use it. I appreciate your do I, do I Google it or what do, how do I, I find Google it? Google OnlyFans leaks, whoever, you know. I get Great. a kick from paying them. I feel like a little more pathetic for giving them money, and that helps me get to the finish line. <laughs> you like a little shame? Yeah. With, with the thoughts, do you think, <laughs> is it always better to do thoughts? Like, what if your thoughts are, like, incredibly perverted, but the porn is relatively benign? Oh, that's a great point. I never thought about that. Like, if my head's taking me to real Abu Ghraib, Type places. <laughs> is that like an ISIS thing? Yeah, fumbled that one. Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about the guy from uh, Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I get that's a good point because for me, the mom slips in or like that lady who hates me slips in. <laughs> yeah. You know, so the porn kind of keeps you sh- straight and narrow. Like these are just mm-hmm. tits and ass. Yeah. Right. Of some lady. And it's and it's disconnected. It's not someone you know. Yeah. Yeah. Your Which, mom slips in. Slips in all the time. Wow. Yeah. She's like chastising you or is she playing ball? Uh, no, she's like, hey, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, ah, get out of here, mom. Because you know? I just run through women I've met. And of course, mom is a woman. So, right, right, right. Or my aunt or my you know, grandmother or whatever. Yeah. Or crossing guard. How are you yeah. on time? What's, I'm uh, okay. I'm okay. We okay. should be done in like 10 or 15. Great. All right. We should be good. Sorry again. I was uh, tardy. That Tesla is <laughs> fucking me right in the ass. Musk. <laughs> Musk. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chad, who's your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is um, I just, uh, I've been ordering a lot of Postmates. I don't know what I like anymore. You ever like oh, order yeah. so much food? Where it's like, options. And, good one. And my girlfriend kind of puts it on me to make the decision about what we're going to eat. And now I'm kind of like, I don't I don't know what to eat. Yeah, I hear you. Boy, this is a tough, tough problem. And, yeah, we, we got, although we got we got Thai food last night. That was, that was good. Love but Thai. I'm, uh, but the thing is, for me, I'm kind of like simple where I'll just, I like like steak every night. Mm-hmm. But she likes to mix it up. Okay. And so I'm like. Well, how much money are you dropping on this? Because this has got to add up. Dude, yeah. Can't you just go to the store, get a pack of these like ten frozen steaks? I think you'll be a happier guy. I mean, that was you know that was me pre relationship. Yeah, this is gluttonous. I, I don't, I'm not trying to <laughs> shit on your lifestyle there. No, but, no, no, dude, I need to hear it. But I think just ordering food is bad for the human psyche. No, she makes food. Uh, she okay. Makes food a lot. Yeah, okay. no, she makes food. It's actually more. Actually, actually, made it sound. She makes food probably like. Three or four nights of the week. Oh, all right, that's pretty good. Yeah, we're not ordering every night. Got it, got but, it. But um, she'll ask what I want, and I'll just want steak every night. But I feel like I have to switch it up for variety. Yeah, it's kind of the jacking like, off issue. The guy just wants to mix it up more. Yeah, yeah. But you could get like a steak salad or steak and eggs. Dude, that's what I've been doing. Oh, okay, okay. A steak salad, 
I'd be like, how about steak and asparagus? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty manly, though. Do you like that? Yeah, 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 you're eating like Jordan Peterson over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, my beef of the week is with... Dude, I don't have a beef this week. Come on. All right, let me dig. Your let beef me dig. was with beef. Dude, I didn't yeah. realize that. Oftentimes it is. Because mm. we did a beef a couple days ago, and I, and I was heavily beefed up that day. But today, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't found a new one in two days. All right, well, let me slide in there. Go, baby. Like my mom while I'm jerking. <laughs> Um, so first of all, I got a beef with Tesla because I can't find a fucking charging station to save my life, but that's neither here nor there. But how about this? Now, I heard you use this term earlier, and I got a beef with this term because I don't think it makes sense. Whoa. You were like, I went to Coachella. It's a zoo over there. You don't like zoo? Well, zoo implies that things are wild and crazy, but have you ever been to a zoo? They're all caged. Everyone's docile. It's very orderly. Mm. It's just people walking around looking at shit, drinking a soda, Mm. you know? So people always say this. I went to a warehouse party in Brooklyn like a, two weeks ago. DJ, you know, dancing, drugs. And my friend's like, it's a zoo in here. And I'm like, no, this is insane. This is wild. The zoo is the opposite of a wild. You see? You take things out of the wild, put them in the zoo. I think, right. I think, you're, I think you're literally 100% correct. Uh-huh. I think you're on the money. What I think the appeal is, it's just a fun word to say. It's a fun word, zoo. Like zoo. Like even when I say it now, I'm excited. Agreed. And I think in the comedy world, they always say cuh is the funniest sound. I think it's ooh. Ooh is better mm. than cuh. Which is why I have so many Jew jokes. <laughs> I got the ooh. <laughs> I'm not anti-Semitic. It's a funny sound. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. It's a funny, funny sound. So yeah, the zoo thing is my beef. That's solid. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Uh, <laughs> this is the hot girl we like. No, it could be. It started that way, and then we brought into it. Yeah, okay. it could be anything. It could be a hot dude. Oh, all right. Uh, it could be a hot, hot object. animal. Something you saw at the zoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Got it. Yeah, is there a hot animal? Dude, there's a another golden retriever in my neighborhood, buddy. He's mm. a babe. Yeah, those are pretty. Yeah. The flowy blonde hair. Well, I got I I got a little golden retriever. I've been taking her on walks, and then I took her. I was taking her for a walk. And then I see Buddy across, and he, you know when they get perched up? Yeah. He's just staring at her. I was like, that's a good dog. That's nice. Yeah. You just want to rub it. Dude. <laughs> I love petting a dog's gut. I love a gut on a dog. Oh, yeah. Apparently it's high trust. If they show yes. the gut to you, yeah, that yeah. means that they trust you completely. Yeah, so my babe is, I got a Maine Coon. It's a kind of cat. Oh. Pull this up if you haven't seen one there, JJ. But, man, <laughs> they are beautiful. It's like having a little lion in your house. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Nice. Big, cl- big paws, I mean. Big ears. Yeah. Fluffy, uh, elegant, crazy eyes. Look at oh, that. Oh, that's wow. huge. I have one of those. That's well, like 30 have pounds. One? Yeah, it's not maybe not that big, but it's just very majestic. That's and, awesome. Uh, it's, yeah. They're so nice, and they make noises like, they don't meow. They go, great cat. And you go, cats over dogs? Well, I think it is a New Yorker. A cat is but a tiny apartment. You don't got to take it for walks and shit. Exactly. Are so. you planning on staying that in New York? That looks like my cat. That's it. Are you a New Yorker for life, you think? Yeah, I think so. I love L.A. I'm not one of these L.A. haters, but I like to visit. If I stay here too long, I just get too chill. I turn into you guys. You know? <laughs> I get too chill, and I just stop working as much, and I just kind of hang out by the pool. I soak in the sun. I smoke some weed. Don't, so. let, the, don't let the chill exterior fool you. Lunatics and so well, you guys yeah. are you guys are working too. I noticed, so I, I appreciate that. But I'm just saying, for me, I would just kick back and uh, have a cerveza in the sun if I lived right, here. Right, right. Sounds nice. It does sound nice. But you won't do one of those errand towns like where a comedian will go to Nashville or like uh, move to. Nah, uh, probably not. Probably what about not. Miami. No, we'd have the spot. same problem. We too sexy. Do Miami. Too sexy. Oh, I think it's yeah. a great city, and you guys should go there if you're thinking about it. It's probably better than it, they say Miami was what LA was ten years ago. Yeah, right. So it's a great town, and Florida's fun as hell. But I don't know. I grew up in New Orleans. I, I've lived that that right, life. Right, right, right. Yeah. My baby of the week is a Chris Stapleton song. I think you should Ooh, leave. That is a classic. He, dude, I he keeps coming out with new hits, and they all sound alike but different enough where yeah. it's like additive to his catalog and i don't know that guy just gets it man it hits you in the heart bone yeah you you start you, when you sing it you really feel like you're in the song yeah like, yeah he knows how to do that and i'm just constantly impressed by him and it's like country but not like hard country it's like it plays for anybody so i'm a big stapleton fan i've been digging that song lately here here that's a good one oh yeah. let me go babe of the week i just watched this movie 12 angry men have you seen it the original the original it's phenomenal phenomenal it's like the best movie i've seen in 10 years 
Uh, dude, Fonda's incredible. When he incredible. When, when he undresses the the bad dude at the end, he's like, "What's going on with you? What yes. kind of hate do you have in your heart?" It's and it's a beautiful. It's still scene. relevant because you're like, "What's?" You see people on Twitter, and you want to go, "What's wrong with you? What's really going on?" You yeah, know? It's a similar vibe with that movie. They get to confront it, dude. Also, I know you opened for Amy Schumer for a while. Her riff on that and her show. Oh, it's killer with DePaulo and and all those guys. Was, it was incredible. I think they won an Emmy on that one. It was an amazing episode. Great right? ep. Great Real, parody. Yeah, that was fucking incredible. Um, Chat. Who's your legend of the week? Uh, nachos. Nice. Wait, what is ledge? Same thing as babe. Same babe. Oh, okay, okay. We could what? probably compress it, but we like if we're gonna have a beef, we like to have two nice things. To I like a nice that. Race. Keep it positive. Yeah. What's when you when you're in the green room? What do you order? Uh, I'm a taco guy because I'm off bread. Yeah. And bread is in everything: sandwiches, pizza, you know, biscuits, bread. muffins, uh, pine pancakes, waffle. So. I like a taco because it's just a little bit of tortilla, but mostly meat. And yeah. then I'll get a salad or a quesadilla. Yeah, I've been I've been doing uh I like nachos, I like spinach dip. Yeah, yeah. Pretzels are good. I mm. always go pretzels. But I was just thinking of like nachos. I just love them. A good I, nacho. I'm, I'm a little low on topics this week because uh, you're little, all right. But you're, you're big right. on toppings with the nachos, uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. I do love nachos, so yeah. I'm think, with you. I'm picking up on your, pot like your. Wordplay as I talk to you. There you go. It's good for the brain. Yeah, it's clicking in different cylinders. Um, my legend of the week. I'm sticking musical. I uh, I just watched the Defiant ones again, the documentary from HBO. That's oh, on Peacock now. I was looking for. Yeah, they it. hit I it on find Peacock. It. Is that Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, yeah he's that's incredible. Great. And my favorite character in is Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's just a fucking man. He can he's fit in anywhere. He never changes. He's smoking weed everywhere, but he always seems like he could get along with people at a country club mm-hmm. or in like the hood and. I just love his energy, and especially at the Source Awards, mm. when like the rap beefs were going on, he goes up there and all of New York's booing him, and he's got this menace in his eyes, and he's like, y'all don't fuck with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre? New York ain't got love for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre? Fuck y'all. He just says that to the entire city. Yeah, and they and, boo like, him. And they go crazy. They had to like rush out. They were going to get killed, and the balls of the guy is just I know. remarkable. And who is, has like transitioned better into... Like he's like the Doritos guy yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know. And like he's he, had like murder beefs. Yeah, exactly. And we just love him anyways. Again, our priorities are out of whack. Like we get mad at like certain people for saying shit, but then like Ice T is like, I killed cops. You yeah. know? <laughs> and everybody's like, ah, what are you gonna do? It's a cultural thing. And I'm like, Well, we're mad at Kevin Hart for tweeting about gays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I think it's their authenticity too. Is that like <laughs> yes. they like never apologize. They're just like, No, this is who I am. Well, yeah. still, but that might not work with the tweet stuff. You couldn't say I really do believe that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I really do dislike gay people. People right. would be like, No, right. no, no, that doesn't cut ice. Clip yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> He's still cool. To, uh, he could do like a commercial for Target, and he'd be like, "That's eh, cool." Yeah, yeah. Did a show with Martha Stewart for yeah. ten minutes. You know, like he's she's he's hot, ubiquitous. She, she crosses my mind. Uh, no, uh, nah. Martha Stewart, yeah. she's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. really. She, she does it for me, and, and yeah. she's such a good homemaker. Beautiful. But she's like a powerful I feel like you'd woman. You'd be into her. Uh, you'd make her gape. Maybe I would. I'd be down. I would do it because uh, just, <laughs> just for the, for the, the breakfast alone. But <laughs> but I don't know. She's a little too square for me. You know, it's funny. Oh, about interesting. That's, Ari Manis is funny. Sometimes when he has like an edgy take, I'll mm-hmm. like joke with him. Like you don't really mean that, but he's so funny. He'll always go, "No, I really do." Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's the only guy I know who doubles down on it. And oh yeah, like, that's genuinely my belief. Ari Manis, funny guy because he hates being a Jew. <laughs> you know, he has a rifle, a truck. You know, he's got a camo hat, and boots a on. Answer. Dude, during COVID, like height of COVID. He flew to China and he took a picture alone on the plane. Uh, going out there. He trolls hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's deep in his soul. It's really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. That flew by. You yeah, guys yeah. are pros. Oh, oh thank you, man. Appreciate it was, your it was pro. a pleasure. Yeah, yeah hey. it was a blast having you on. Pros and bros. Good luck with the charging. Thank you. Sorry, I made it the whole thing, but it's really chapping my cunt. <laughs> if you need advice. 